Hi, my name is Mark D. Coppolis, and I'm a Philadelphia criminal defense and real estate lawyer. And this is my Philadelphia criminal law blog. One question I get a lot when people come into my office is, what is a preliminary hearing? And should you waive your preliminary hearing? And tonight I would like to talk a little bit about that. Um, in the county of Philadelphia, and this is specific to Philadelphia because I practice in Philadelphia, you, have a, you, you basically have a right to a preliminary hearing if you've been charged with a felony offense, not an ungraded felony, a felony three, two, or one in the county of Philadelphia. And what is a preliminary hearing? Basically, it's a chance for a judge to hear the facts of the case, to hear a basic outlay, outlay of the Commonwealth's facts to decide, is there something here? Is, is there a, basically a basis for this case to go forward? And the idea behind it is, if you're facing a felony offense, an F3, an F2, an F1, something that carries a maximum of somewhere between 7 and 20 years in prison, something that may go for years, it's a good idea to have the judge, to have a judge listen at the very beginning of the case to decide, is there something here? Because in a lot of situations where you're facing a felony offense, the defendant may not go to trial for two years. And so the idea of the preliminary hearing is to get this case in front of a judge to hear the facts and decide, is there a prima facie case against this defendant? Now, what's that loosely correlated to is, is the judge convinced, more likely than not, that the defendant committed the crimes that are alleged? Now, while more likely than not may not be the official standard, that is kind of the common, the common standard that's used in the courts, is the judge convinced, more likely than not, that the crimes that are alleged were committed. And if the Commonwealth cannot prove at the preliminary hearing a prima facie case that the defendant committed the crimes, then the charges are dismissed and the case is over really before it even began. And that kind of takes me to the second question, which is, should I waive my preliminary hearing? Now, there's an exception to every rule, but I would say that in at least 80% of the cases, probably about 80%, kind of going back to the 80-20 rule, 80% of the time, I would say, absolutely not, you should not waive your preliminary hearing. Why? Because you're getting a sneak preview of the Commonwealth's case. The Commonwealth is going to call all their witnesses, or at least the witnesses that they need to prove the essential offenses of their, of their case, and your defense attorney is going to have a chance to cross-examine those witnesses, to ask those witnesses some questions, to get to, if the judge is lenient, potentially get some information to prepare for motions that may be litigated down the road. So let's say that you are charged with DUI third offense. The Commonwealth has jury demanded the case. Um, because it's a jury demand, you're going to have a preliminary hearing. You go in, the police officer goes in, the police officer is going to get up there and testify to everything that's probably going to ha happen at the trial in six months, one year, two years down the line. This is your chance to get information from that witness and start getting ready for your case ahead of time. It's a sneak preview. And so you shouldn't waste that opportunity and just waive your preliminary hearing if you have a chance to cross-examine that officer. Maybe that officer is going to say something on the stand that contradicts what's in his police report. Or maybe he'll say something at the preliminary hearing that's inconsistent with what he's going to say in the trial in two years. And because you had that preliminary hearing, because you were able to lock him into his testimony, you're going to have another chance to impeach that officer that you wouldn't otherwise have. So there's really no reason to waive a preliminary hearing. In addition to that, Maybe the Commonwealth completely drops the ball at the preliminary hearing and the case is dismissed by the judge for lack of prosecution if they don't bring their witnesses in. Or the judge decides, you know what, I heard the facts and I'm not convinced, more likely than not, that the defendant committed these crimes. So it's really a chance to jump on a criminal case right away. There's a lot of defendants who will just wait to hire a lawyer until after the preliminary hearing. They think, oh, well, you know, it's just preliminary. It's not that important. I'm going to save my money and get the lawyer after the preliminary hearing. I would advise against that. Obviously, I'm biased, but the reason I advise against it is because it gives your lawyer a chance to get the facts of the case right off the bat. And that is invaluable 
when you're preparing for the case six months, one year, two years down the line, when you can go back to those preliminary hearing notes because everything that's set, is, that's set at that preliminary is being written, typed down, you can look at those notes and you can say, he said this, in his police report he said that, and at trial he's going to say that. And you can use those preliminary hearing notes to impeach the Commonwealth's witnesses further down the line. So my advice would be, as a general rule, do not waive your right to a preliminary hearing. Make them prove their case. Make them prove it at a prima facie level because you may be able to use that evidence somewhere down the line. And you may even get the case dismissed. My name is Mark D. Coppolis. I'm a Philadelphia criminal defense and real estate lawyer. If you have any questions about a preliminary hearing or need representation at a preliminary hearing, please don't hesitate to contact me. My office can be reached at 267-535-9776. Thank you.